Hello everyone, it's Digitrax Dad back and we're continuing on in our theme of programming transponder decoders. Tonight, what we're going to do is program a TF4 Digitrax transponder decoder. This is a function only decoder instead of just the one function that the TL1 has. This one has four functions. So the TF4 we will tonight program instead of using a, a Zephyr or a DCS51 unit tonight. We're going to use the old uh, DT400 and my now superseded but very capable DCS100 unit. So let's get into it. Okay, so we've set up our DCS100 command station. We've got our uh, Digitrax PS2012 power supply, and that's supplying the five amps that the DCS100 needs. Now, we're not using the five amps tonight. We've got up to five amps available, but we're using the program A and program B tracks like we did on the Digitrax Zephyr in a previous video. I've got a couple of leads there with jumper connectors and alligator clips and that's connected tonight to our TF4 uh, transponding function only decoder with our four functions. So what we're going to do is power up and read the address on the TF4 and change that to an address that, uh, that we need. Okay, now the difference between a TF4 and a TL1 is really quite simple. The TL1, and you may recall we looked at the TL1 in a previous video, you can see here it has four wires. The red and black wires go to the track, and the blue and white wires go to a single function, like a light or another device. On the TF4, however, the four is the giveaway. The four means it's got four functions, and all that means here is that it's got more wires than the TL1. You've got your red and black wires that still go to the track, but then you've got blue, white, yellow, purple, and green wires that are used for your functions. Your blue is your common, so it's a bit like having four function wires and a common, so your white, your yellow, your purple, and your green, and your blue is a common. That's the only difference between the TF4 and the TL1. Let's power up now the PS2012 and would see and you would have heard the light of the uh, sound of the DCS 100 coming on we've got our config sequence through here we've got our power on LED down here in the bottom corner we've got our network connection and that's because I've got something plugged into the logo net in this case I've got a DT 400R throttle can't use that in radio mode in simplex radio mode tonight for what we're doing so that's why it's hard plugged in Tonight, you see, I've just set up a program A and a program B track, being the red and the black wires here. We don't need a ground, and we don't need the rail A and B for what we're doing tonight. Scale setting tonight, I've got it on N gauge, even though I, want, I run double O gauge, or in the US, that would be similar to HO. N gauge seems to provide more than sufficient voltage for what I need, so I've got it set to the minimum as per the instructions. Now, the DCS100 is in sleep mode. What we need to do is turn it in, into run mode. Now, you can see that's brought to life the DT400 throttle. What we need to do is power that up. So we press the power button down here in the bottom left-hand corner, power, and the Y4 plus to turn on. We know it's on because now we've got a solid dot up here in, on the display, and we can commence programming now. The first thing we're going to do is read back the address on the decoder. Now, as you've seen, I've pulled that one straight out of a bag. It should have, as per the instructions, address 003, a two-digit address. Let's check that out. We get a program. And you can see here that we've got address 2 equals question marks. 
we're in PG or paged mode. That's the preferred mode for, for Digitrex. We can go across and do an address four, but we want to read the address two across first. We do that by pressing the display button up here. Display, you can see the RD came up uh, very briefly, which means reading, and it's come back with the address and it says 003. No surprises, what we'd expect with a decoder, any decoder coming from the factory pulled out of a bag is likely to have address 3. What do we want to do? Well, we want to program it tonight with an address that we need for our layout. So tonight, and as you've seen on maybe some of my other videos, I'm installing transponding decoders into brake vans or cabooses, much like this one here. So we can see on this one here, this is a London, Midland, Scotland, because I model um, the UK, but it doesn't matter. You can, you can find whatever you want. The number on this one is 134900. So what I'm going to use is the last four digits, 4900. And we're going to make that the decoder address for this wagon. How do we do it? Okay, let's move over to address four mode which is our four digit address mode, we do that simply by pressing the right hand throttle knob. Pressing it once takes us to address two, pressing it again it takes us to address four. We're still in paged mode, which is the preferred mode, and what we're after now is the address. As I said, looking in our brake van, we need the address of 4900. So we select Four, nine, zero, zero, and to enter that address we press the enter button. Enter. We can see the WR being the right symbol and after a brief time it's now telling me that address 4 equals 4900. Zero, zero. Let's check out if that's indeed the case. Let's pretend we power off the whole system by turning off the PS2012 power supply. And we'll see everything go dead. We hear the beep, the lights fade out, the unit is off. Let's turn that back on now and power up. Okay, we're still in run mode here, but the throttle is not powered up. We need to press power and yes. We have the solid dot up here in the top right corner, which indicates we've got power on. We're in run mode, we're not in sleep mode. Let's read back that decoder that we've just programmed here, the uh, TF4. How do we do it? We go to program mode. We press the right hand throttle once to see that we've got address 4. At the moment, zeros on that. Let's read the display by pressing the display button, RD for read, and let's read what the four digit address is on this decoder. This can take some time as the command station here is interrogating the information on the decoder. What does it come back with? 4900, which is the address that we program. So we now know that this uh, decoder here, our TF4, has the address 4900. Now at this point, as I did in the last video on this, is I print out a small label with 4900 on and stick it onto this decoder so I know what's programmed there. Can I always read it back? Yes. Is that always convenient? Not always. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've labelled our decoder with its new address 4900. The next step that we're going to do is look at the functions on this decoder and what do we want them set at. Now, do follow through the instructions here. These decoders are best installed where there is not already another Digitrax transponding decoder. I use these when I'm using something like a lock sound decoder or particularly for a piece of rolling stock that I want to know where it might be on the layout at any one time. Cabooses or brake vans, 
are a, are a piece of equipment, I want to know where they are, and I can use the transponding find button on here, which is this button there, to find where on the layout it is, or via some software on the computer using a BDL168 block detector and an RX4 transponder. I'm going to put a video together on how they all go together and make that work. Let's look through here. Now, what we do want is that we want our transponding on. What's different in this table is transponding is represented by a TX. Now, because we want our transponding to be on, what we're looking for is values that the TX is on. And that's these values in here. Coming over here, we see that our white LED could be function one, our yellow function two, a green function three and a violet lead function four. Remember, function fun, fun, uh, blue lead is not a function lead, it's common to all of those. So our four functions are represented by the white, the yellow, the green and the violet. Now, I like to use function one to turn on my main light. So I would probably adopt the one, two, the three and the four. But you can adopt totally different sets here like F5, F6, F7 and 8, if you don't use them for anything else in your locos, they make make sense for you to use a combination of 002 for 64 and 002 for 61. I'm going to go with my 00 on 64 and my 002 on 61. That means I'll end up with an F1, F2, F3, F4, and transponding. Let's go ahead and set those up. Okay, let's go ahead and program these function mapping for the TF4. What we need to do is turn our attention to CV64. How we do that with the DT400 is we press on the right hand throttle once and using the potentiometer here, we dial up CV 64. Now can we go ahead and enter CV64 using the keypad? Yes we can. CV64 currently is showing 000. Let's read it just to see. Press display, reading, it's showing up as a value of 0. It comes from the factory with a value of 0. It's no surprise. What do we want it to be in our case to get the functions we want? We want zeros. So that's good, we're, we're good to go. Okay, let's have a look at CV61. Let's dial up CV61 here. There's CV61. Let's read what it says by pressing display. And it's showing 002. 002 is what we want. That gives us a function 1, function 2, function 3, function 4, and transponding on. That's what we want for this decoder. So there's no additional programming we need to do here. Now, if we have a look at our CV49, this controls whether or not any of these lighting functions in here do various flashes, strobes, pulses, and blinks. For our purposes on British Railway, where we don't have any of these pulsing blinks and flashes and strobes, a simple on-off is fine, which means we want to see CV49 and CV50 simply showing 00. zero. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so I've dialed up CV49. It's showing that it doesn't know what it is. We want it to be zero. Let's check reading it's zero excellent let's go to cv50 turn that to the right cv50 read it showing zero that's what we want that means our white and our yellow leads are both going to control lights that could flash in our case we've just got them turning on and off any questions leave them down below and i'll do my best to answer them thanks for watching everyone bye for now